Hey everybody, it's Gum Family. Welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone had an amazing New Year's and Christmas. Before we get started into today's video, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of my channel, NewTypeHQ.com. I'm going to have the link down in the description below and don't forget to use my code Gum Family to save yourself 10% off your total order. Now let's get into the goods of video. So I was browsing YouTube as I normally do on my days off. I actually stumbled across this Korean modeler. I'm going to have the link down in the description below so you guys can check out his content. And he was using pastels, which is a kind of um pigment or i don't even know all the technical terms of art but anyways he was using pastels to weather his kits and i thought oh wow that's a pretty cool idea because you know not everyone has access to airbrush and paints and all that and especially me being now that i moved into an apartment it gets pretty challenging challenging to paint so i thought this would be a cool video for you guys we'll see how it goes let me show you guys what i did Here is the box of pastels that I picked up at my local craft store. I believe it was Joann's. Um, they always have like 50% off coupons. So I went ahead and used that to get this. So I think this whole box came out to be like $7. Something like some, some change. So not too bad. And you get a variety of colors. Although the only one I'm going to be using is this black one right here. And I've seen different ways of doing this. Um, the video that I got inspiration to do this one was from a Korean modeler. He rubs it on his fingertips. Um, I won't be doing that. I'm going to do this other method where I saw people get an X-Acto knife and they actually scrape off some powder just like that. Just to zoom in just a little bit. There we go. And they just scrape off a little bit of powder going to be using a q-tip instead of my fingertips just because i feel like a it's a little less messy and i can be a little bit more precise in my um application so here he is and let me just try to scoop some off the ground here i don't know if these q-tips will work for this application because these are q-tips i got from japan and unlike u.s style q-tips these are very um the fibers are very pressed in, so they're not at all loose, kind of like the Q-tips we have here in the States. Now this has been top coated, um, because like I said, I was following the instructions from the Korean modeler, and he top coats his figures first, and then he does um, the pastel applying. So I'm just gonna apply at the edges here, and hopefully see how that looks. Um, I mean, it's very subtle, like, oh, there we go. Now this is the first time I've ever weathered with pastels. Normally I just do uh, weathering with my airbrush. So, um, I'm not very impressed, I can honestly say with how this is coming out right now. Maybe I should try just using my fingertips and see how that comes out. But overall, so far I'm not very pleased with the results. Um, let me try breaking this apart. Now normally how I do weathering um, is I will darken the edges of armor so like look at this piece right here it's like this i will go ahead well if i had my airbrush i would obviously this wouldn't be one piece i would pop this out and i would spray a um a black along the edges like this and along the bottom edge so all the edges i would spray black and then i would lay on the base um color on top of that black so the edges would be darker that's how my uh, well, my strategy is to when i weather things so this is going to be interesting because I don't know how I'm going to get in here with my finger. Um, let me try the finger technique that I saw this guy use. So I'm going to go around the edges like how I would normally do so with my airbrush. Oh shoot. Oh my god, this is going to be really Ah, <laughs> uh, great. Okay. You know, maybe I should just stick to airbrushing. Okay. I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit more on my fingertips. 
and then rub it like this because that's how I see he does it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is definitely not as easy as I thought it was going to be how it looked on the video. Let me try to buff this out a little bit. At least the camera is focusing on this. Let me maybe move this out the way. One here. I mean, the color is definitely applying on there. It's just really hard to, when your fingers are covered in this stuff, which is like very easy to get all over the place, it's kind of hard to work with you know being somewhat exact with the location of where the pigment is going um you can see here there's a little bit around the outer edge let me try maybe with this q-tip to help apply it a little bit better i mean so far i a lot harder than it looks to get it to look you know like you airbrushed a kit I'm not even on camera okay yeah I don't even know how I'm going to um Get it to be around these edges because I could barely get it around here. It's of course, all over my thumb. I mean, if you can see the difference, obviously this one looks a little bit darker, but the application process it's not very precise. I mean, this is water-based pastels. So, I, I, you know, I, I would think that you could clean this up with some water. But honestly, I'm not very pleased with how this is coming up. Maybe I'm just doing this wrong. I'm going to try to go in with the Q-tip again. Maybe I need a brush instead. But... Let me try going around the edges right around here. And I'm pretty bummed because I was really looking forward to seeing how this came out because I unfortunately no longer have that much free time in order to paint my kits um, because painting does require, you know, it is a time commitment. You know, you have to get, sand the pieces down, prime them, wait and wait a day. Then lay the base coat. I mean, not uh, not base coat. Not even that. You have to do your shadowing first, and then do the base on top of that. You know, it, it, it that whole process. It just takes a while, and the cleanup involved after it. So you know, unfortunately, I just don't have the time anymore to do that. So I was kind of really hoping that this could be an easy alternative to painting, um, and the fact of an apartment makes it even more complicated. But, yeah, this is going to be a lot of work to get this to look like you airbrush this. So, yeah, you have to get the shadowing along all these edges right here. And then I like see like my your finger my well my thumbs not thumbs my fingertips are so wide I don't know how you're supposed to get this to be somewhat precise of an application instead of just running black all over the kit. Mm. I'm not really pleased with how this is honestly coming out right now. Um. Try putting a little bit of 
powder to go down these edges. So my whole point is I don't want to just completely put black all over the piece. You know, I'm just trying to get the edges of it. But again, I don't know how with just your fingertips you're able to be very precise about where you're applying pigment. Uh, I mean, I don't even know if the camera is picking up the coloring on here. But I, in person... I mean, I'm not very pleased. Here is the one with the black and here's the non-black leg. Not much of a difference. It's very, very subtle. Here is a leg. Like, it just looks like there's grease smeared on him. <sighs> Man, I'm really disappointed. You know, maybe I just need to practice some more. Um, because that the video that I watched with the Korean modeler, he made it look so, you know, just straightforward. But I guess my application skills are not that great. Obviously. Let me try maybe putting it along these edges right in here. Oh shoot, I got too much on there. this piece doesn't look too bad but again I'm not trying to get black all over the the piece I'm just trying to get it on the edges of the kit But instead of doing that, I'm just getting black all over the piece. And that's not the point of the weathering. You just want to get it on along the outer edges of it. And there's this. All right. And here's the upper torso. I mean, I might as well just do the whole kit now that I've already done the lower half, right? Can't really stop. Yeah, I think this is definitely a no-go for me. I mean, you guys let me know down below. What do you guys think? Is this something that you guys would want to try on your kit? Um, I just expected the overall outcome to be a little different from what see this doesn't look too bad right here a little strong in some of the but yeah I mean this right here it doesn't look too bad maybe it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to applying the pasta. Oh, great. I just got the whole piece. And it's pretty easy to remove it to clean up. Okay. That's much better than the lower half. That looks pretty decent. Um, I get a little bit in here. I'm going to be adding some chipping effects as well to give it that beat up weathered look. I'm going to need the Q-tip to get in here.
don't know how I'm going to clean the inside of this thing again because my objective is not to just get black all over the part. I specifically want to darken the only the outer edges and maybe add somewhat of a gradient effect um, moving outward from the edges. But it's a little hard doing this. Um, just because you know you only have your fingers or a Q-tip, but the Q-tip I feel like doesn't work that well in applying the product. Or maybe it's just a Q-tip I have. You know, I'm not sure. See, here's kind of what I'm trying to go for. See how it's a little bit of black along the edge and it's somewhat of a gradient effect moving outwards is what I'm trying to go for here. It's just a little hard. See that piece doesn't look too bad. My eyes. I hope I just totally didn't ruin my figure by rubbing pastel all over it. And we shall see. Yeah, edge looks pretty good. It's got way too much black on this piece right here. You see how I'll just try and clean it up after. It looks good when you can just get the edges and then rub it in just a little bit after that. Maybe this is better for, um, cause you see how this looks really nice. This just purple edge right here. Okay, you kind of see this fading effect right here. That's no for me. I'm going to try to make that more gradient so it's not such a harsh edge where you can clearly see the difference. I'm like scared to touch because wherever I touch, I'm gonna get pigment on this kit. And of course, um, you gotta top coat it again after doing this to seal in the paint. Is that piece done? I feel like it's way too much gray. I'd rather have it look like the top piece. Well, I mean gray, black. But it's just, I try to clean and it just smears it even more. It's hard for me to really recommend this technique. You know, maybe again, I'm just doing it wrong, but I'm not having the outcome that I was anticipating which I'm pretty disappointed in but hey you know sometimes you just gotta stick it to the true and tested method of airbrushing there is the pack back the back piece done okay, I'm see if I can try to clean this piece up by here because it's really dark from all the black I just have this arm left to do. And this piece. 
piece right here. I mean, doesn't look terrible, right? Doesn't look too bad. This looks way too clean to me. Just kind of rough it up just a little bit to match the rest of the body. Okay, so I mean, this part looks pretty decent. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, the effect is very subtle. Uh, so far, my favorite piece that I, has come out has been these little chest pieces right here. I feel like those look the best. I don't know where his foot go. I lost his foot, guys. Oh, here it is. Lastly, I need to paint. Paint. I mean, I need to apply some coloring to his little shoe. Alright, so here is the completed uh, look slash weathering um, pastel application. I actually added some chip marks uh, as you can see here at the chest. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. So you can see I did apply some chip marks on the torso, the thighs, you know, where I would think that um, arm would be chipped from moving parts. So I did add some chip marks because I just, um, I don't know, I felt like it didn't look that great with the pastels. Here's some more chips at, oop, shoot, more chips at the elbow and things like that. So I tried to accent a little bit more, you know, just to make the whole kit look a little bit more weathered. But this is how it uh, looked with the pastels. As you can see, overall somewhat darker. Again, I did apply a flat top coat before I applied any of the pastels to the kit. And I pretty much only use the black, as you guys saw. But um, I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. I am not really sold on it exactly. So I hope you guys liked it. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm going to do a hard pass. I don't know if maybe it's just the technique I was using. Um, because this is something I've never done before. But I was not very pleased with the outcome. I was anticipating something much much better and unfortunately for me it's just not worth the hassle of getting everything all my hands dirty and i just think that the look of a painted kit looks much better than this um so yeah i for me in my book this was a fail um maybe i could try different methods i'm not sure maybe you guys can let me know if i just didn't apply the, the pastel correctly who knows but yeah, I was thinking maybe I should upload this video, but you know, maybe maybe you guys can learn something from it. I don't know, but yeah, I think this is definitely not going to be a repeat for me on any other kids. So yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys around for the next one. Adios.